Way back in 2020, I experienced the most insane growth of art known to man. It was non-stop staying inside and working on that art grind with my little drawing tablet and my teeny tiny Instagram following. Those were really the days where Instagram did not hide my content from my followers. I'm still salty about it to this day. But way back when, I was really obsessed with singer named Sarah Hendelman and all of his projects and music endeavors. I'm gonna leave discussion about him and everything he's done for a future video, ignoring how you don't know anything about this man. Let me enlighten you on the best album of all times. No, don't come at me for this claim. It's simply my humble opinion, and it's called Bleed On Your Dress. The title of the album is whack, but I feel it also adds to the vibes of the songs as well. Like, who is bleeding? Is it me? Is it you? If it's me, why am I bleeding on your dress? Is it white? How much does that dress cost? Do you own stain remover? What's the number for your dry cleaner? A lot of questions that remain unanswered. In all honesty, the music is not that good. Heck, I even forced myself to listen to it on loop for a week until I liked it. How silly of me. But nowadays, like three years later, I love that album and its music to bits. Nine songs, uh, 35 minutes in total of banger after banger. A goofy younger Tysaur back in 2020 decided to draw each of the songs as a piece of art with the main character being some guy. Just some aesthetic pretty boys to embody each song. It was my first ever big personal art project and I'm still really proud of it. And three years later, I decided to redo it. All nine of them. It was a big journey that took a total of three months to complete, so I will break this into three separate videos. YouTube will love the consistency, and hopefully you guys will love me talking about the most artistic endeavor I've undertaken in a long, long time. The first song on the album is an absolute banger. I, of course, recommend for you to stop the video here and go listen to the song yourself. It slaps so hard, and Big Boy YouTube will be upset if I show it to you myself. I promise you won't regret it. With the title of Opiate, it starts you off on a journey of poetic lyrics where you barely make sense what any of it means. The word opiate means related to opium or dulling of the senses. With opium. Like getting hooked on drugs, I got hooked on this song. Which is a horrible analogy, but bear with me. It is honestly fitting with the song since the lyrics sound like jumbling confusion. Some of the lyrics also allude to the singer being hooked on drugs. The line, if I bleed is not my poison, in a way seems to parallel what I brought up previously, but it kind of sounds like an excuse an addict would make, like, I can stop anytime I want, and my body, I can pour all the toxins into me that I want, kind of thing, if that makes sense. But that is my interpretation, at least. Seriously, a lot of the lyrics are a total reference to a guy tripping balls. And if I flush this euphoria, I close my eyes and I trip into the earth like fire inside, and I shut my mouth, I don't betray it. It's good. I know it's hard to be smart, and this one is talking about how scattered brain he is now that he has in inhaled or shot up or however we take opium. He is high. I, I kind of feel like an English teacher who's like trying to break down poetry, but you're like, sure, that's totally what they mean, but just, just bear with me, bear with me. Just believe that I'm right. Let me, let me convince you that my interpretation without any proof that is correct is true. These are just some examples to aid in my analysis. I didn't pick up on this until I googled what the title meant when writing the script. But without this, the song has more of a tone of guilt and regret while also enjoying your sins. But now that I've explained the deep analysis I've come up with the song, ignore all of it. I didn't even use any of it when drawing the piece. The line I previously mentioned, if I bleed, it's not my poison, is one of my favorite lines of lyrics ever. It barely means anything, but the wording and the structure makes it low-key aesthetic. There is also lyrics like, and I whisper some St. John and Paul in the band. This one is pretty obvious if you grew up in a western nation, but my man Sar just sprinkled in some religious allusions. This, this means he referenced the Bible without outwardly saying he referenced the Bible. My AP lit teacher would be so proud of me for real. But anyways, I didn't look too deep into this, but I, I will later. I, I'll brush up upon it. Hendelman loves his Bible imagery, but unfortunately for him, I was kind of born and brought up Hindu, so... Google my beloved for real. Now that I've discussed the tone and stuff, you may be wondering what I did with this. Nothing. I simply drew what I drew last time and the time before that. Some guy bleeding. I guess his hands are the possession that 
it is at conveys the mood of the song in a way. Honestly, I wouldn't change it so it's so darn aesthetic. Some little squiggles in the background are so darn cool. This is the only piece with two previous versions of it since I tried restarting the series previously but got stuck on the second piece. Speaking of the second piece, it was literal hot garbage back in 2020. It, it was fine, but I knew back then it was one of the weaker pieces that I've ever done. I guess I was wandering a bit out of my comfort zone. Oddly, the song may also be out of the comfort zone for non-SAR listeners. Totally recommend you listen to it though. A tonal shift, but not the usual stuff people would listen to. I guess I had to condition myself to like this one, but it gets good over time, like a fine wine. The background singers kinda ruin it sometimes, but the lyrics with this one are amazing. From this point forward, I'm just picking apart this these songs. It's crazy. But <laughs> how Star starts off this song is with the lines fe 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 fever in staccato. While staccato may help illustrate the state that he is in, it is the way he sang it that I love. He uses freaking staccato to sing about staccato, which is wild and cool. For my non-musician friends, staccato is performed with each note sharply detached or separated from each other. But the best part is, this is not the only song he does this kind of stuff. If I had a nickel for every time Sari uses music terminology to describe something and sings it in that music terminology, while saying what it is, I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird it happened twice in a single album. He just, he does staccato again in my favorite part of the song. Stutter, stutter, flail, and I pulled the car over. The line includes staccato, but also another cool element. To be honest, this guy takes the whole performance part to a whole nother level, while tying his lyrics into how he sings. The first time he says the word stutter, he repeats it. Repeating words is a form of stuttering, which is the most popular form of stuttering used when people are trying to act as someone who ha has a stutter. Sorry he uses it to push his message across. The only part of the song where he does this is when he says stutter stutter. But with a ton of metaphors I do not understand, there is also mention of an apple tree. This acts as an allusion to that of the Garden of Eden from the Bible. Well, now the imagery never leaves you. This is fermented with the line, and I stutter, my faith. The apple is used symbolically. It is only the background singers who sing of the tree, but also these singers are all women. They sing, who is that hiding behind the apple tree? However, Sar mentions the apple indirectly with a veil over my anger and fear of a core that aches. In my reading of the song, it looks like a story of dissatisfaction with a lover and a toxic relationship that comes from it. He uses a lover in parallel to Eve. I don't know, I have the most limited knowledge of the Bible, but I know that Apple and Eve and stuff like that don't, don't come at me. I'm a Hindu. <laughs> Talk Talk to me about Shiva or Krishna or something. Not 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 the Bible. Yeah, so with this, there is also themes of tragic events that take place, as this would cause a person to waver in their faith, like with the stuttering that was mentioned in the song. In my interpretation, it feels like an argument between two lovers ending up having the car submerged in water, causing them to almost drown. The woman behind the apple tree mentioned being this lover, girlfriend, if you will. And then the car part is, of course, mentioned in the song, but I'm not gonna quote every single line of the song for this. But when making this piece, I had to convey the emotions of anger and frustration, but also just suffocation. I, of course, had to put an image of an apple since it is such a powerful symbol. I took the weird rubbed hands from last time and made them into gloved hands. This references the line, rub my face with cloth hands. Back in the beginning of the art series, I did not care about conveying a full message, just bits of it. Like, taking a line of lyric and just drawing based on that. Coincidentally, it happened. The melting apple conveys the poison and the toxicity of the relationship, the multiple hands coming from all angles cementing how the character cannot escape their situation and causes a bit of claustrophobia. And the look in the character's face and the eyes melting upwards can symbolize their miserable situation and how it was ultimately damaging on them. I think it worked out unintentionally, which is amazing. This piece was great and showed how wonderful I am at drawing hands. Now that we are finished with this biblical mess, let's move on to another one. This is the last piece I'm going to discuss in this video. We got six more to go, yippee, in the two other videos. 
Honestly, I get no meaning from this song whatsoever, but if there is one, then oh boy, it is dripping with religious symbolism. But not just a Christian kind. The Buddha and demigods also make it into this one. However, I have no idea what a mingling demigod rebel is, but that is a vibe. This time, it is more literal with the Bible stuff. Freaking Jesus is name dropped. Insane. As well as angels, Mary, monks, altar boys, cherubs, and bedlam boys. Just dripping and oozing. But that is the vibe I went for in my piece. A godly presence. Now, contrary to what I said, the characters in the song are chilling and acting casually. Chatting in balconies, playing instruments, playing poker, going on beer runs, and whatever fun shenanigans they also do in the Bible. I don't know. Never read it. This, this is a joke, by the way. This is a joke. <laughs> but with a song starting out with footsteps that drone in and out, and the sound of voices chattering in sections throughout the song, it sounds like the protagonist is walking through a late 1800s to early 1900s social elite party. I say protagonist because it's like a story, I guess, in a way. The vibes are immaculate. The song is the only one I like right away because it is a vibe. The song does a good job at building this up. The ending piano bit is amazing. Sar is a pianist, so a lot of his stuff is really good when there's piano in it, and I'm also pretty sure all the songs has a piano, like, piano bits in it. If not, all of it. I got some clips of him playing the piano and singing that I enjoy very much, so if you want to see those, message me on Instagram, or on Twitter, or wherever you can message me, because I will love to share. So, compared to last time, I decided to go off the titular name of the song, Naked. A naked man had to be drawn and completed with golden top screw scars and a star for a nipple. The essence of drip and pizzazz. The previous piece was just some angel in a fancy outfit playing a violin. It kind of captured the vibe with the fit, but I was missing a lot of opportunities. With a naked man. <laughs> In my own Thai universe version of an angel, they are always crying with pointy ears and their eyes are always covered in flowers. And if I had flowers, why did not make them sunflowers? For a bit of context, the part of the song where he says that he is naked, it is, and I quote, and I am naked, burning sunflower, burning sunflower. And I love this part of the song. It doesn't mean anything. I am naked, burning sunflower. Burning sunflowers, why? Does this mean anything? I don't know. <laughs> I made fan art for Star in the Past where he's in a field of sunflowers because of this. Where are my sunflowers? What are these purple things? <laughs> oh my god. So I drew a couple of sunflowers and a fancy upside down one to obstruct the face like in the OG one. It's very aesthetic. I had to keep my angel in the orchestra so his violin stayed. The wings were kinda a sleigh, but the whole thing was a sleigh. It's giving I have been doing digital art for over six years. I adore the sunflowers and just everything about it, even the stars in the background. A giant sleigh for me drawing a shirtless man with the best abs I have ever rendered, as well as the peak rim lighting. When in doubt, rim your piece. Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. All right. These are the first three pieces that I've made for the series. I was starting out and very strong with banger after banger. I, I, I just love these songs. The trans community really liked the last one. <laughs> just shot top for your scars and, and they're all like, yes, yes, this one's for you. <laughs> Sar Hendelman, love that guy. All the songs I just mentioned sit around 2,000 to 4,000 listens on Spotify, which is criminally underrated. Like when I found the songs on YouTube, they were around 400 listens, like 400 views. And now they're on a thousand views, which I mean, it's gone up, but not enough. Naked is a second most listened song with 4K listens. And he seriously needs more love. The other six songs will be coming out in the span of a month or something. After this, my thought process for the pieces goes downhill after I make everything unnecessarily complicated for myself. How sad. If you want to hear another video about me rambling about my art process and my reasoning behind everything that I do for a certain piece, 
this Sally Face speed paint is pretty cool. The audio is shit, but no one cares. But until next time, hee <laughs>